everybody to the Go Home Show for Thin Red Line. Welcome to Shootout. We are here in the home city of the late, great Eddie Guerrero here in El Paso, Texas. We have got great matches, and I wonder what is going to happen as we get going here just a few days away from Thin Red Line. We open things up. Duke's into coming down to the ring, but SDC's gonna take a shot at him. The ref's gotta get in there and break it up. The Lone Star champ has gone wild. The ref wants anybody and everybody to come out here. I don't know if this means SDC might feel threatened of Duke Zenda, but who knows as we head into thin red line. Ryan Adams already in the ring, and he has a great shot at defeating the number one contender with that attack from SDC. The ref finally rings the bell. Duke, what are you doing, brother? Backbreaker from Ryan Adams. Ryan Adams, this, this would be a hell of a win for him. Oh, man, Duke dives out of the way. Ryan Adams at one and five. Nice flatliner there from Duke, who is four and four. But he is getting that title shot at Thin Red Line. Ryan Adams, of course, part of the team with uh, the Savage John Robb rap and rock connection. We haven't actually seen them as a team just yet. Since the, the uh, Gunslingers Championship Tournament. Oh, dodges the knee. He's going to hook Ryan Adams up. Back body drop, my goodness, right onto the back of his, of his head. And Duke now looks maybe taking his frustrations out on Ryan Adams after SDC comes down to the uh, to interrupt things. Double underhook suplex, nice job there. Duke getting drug away from the ropes. Uh-oh. Ryan Adams with a shot to the midsection maybe to the elbow is a little hard to see there going for the pin a victory over Duke Zenda will do wonders for Ryan Adams he goes up top again and this time lands a big knee right across the chest of the former champion oh off the ropes and a big clothesline taking down Duke Duke not ready though to give up he's angry but he is scheduled to fight tonight so he is going to uh the knee across the side of the head he's going to fulfill his duties one thing i can say about duke is it doesn't matter who it is and it doesn't matter where and it doesn't matter what happens he's going to fight if he's scheduled to fight he's going to perform as he is supposed to headlock now duke has got ryan adams by the back of the neck up on the ropes. Uh oh. That's no oh, that springboard kick right to the side of the face. And we might be seeing pay dirt right there. Duke Zenda on Ryan Adams to uh Oh. Ryan Adams kicks out. Interesting shot to the arm now. And, oh, driving the face of Adams down on the mat using the knee to the back of the neck. And now just raking the forearms. Duke Zenda is furious. And we've seen it before where things haven't been going somebody's way. The week before the pay-per-view, they get really fired up. Something lights inside them. And they head off to the pay-per-view and win. Duke, very possible it's uh, he could win that Lone Star Championship back from SDC. And then, as we've said and we all know, it doesn't matter if it's Duke. Oh, nice neck breaker there by Ryan Adams. He goes for the pin. One, two, no. Just a two count. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's Duke Zenda or SDC who wins that championship. At Thin Red Line, Brett Storm is the next in line and a reversal. Looked like Ryan Adams was setting him up for something and Duke hits him with that jumping neck breaker. 
And now very close to the ropes. Yep, you got to get away from the ropes. And Ryan Adams is going to take advantage of that. Tried to roll out of the ring. Smart move by Duke, though, to stop it. Neck breaker. Uh-oh. Boy, Ryan Adams stood right up into the corner, though. Right back out. Hooks him up. And if Duke hasn't had a Falcon Arrow done to him yet, Ryan Adams just plants him. We know that. We've seen uh, SDC do that quite a few times. Into the corner goes Duke. And look at, oh man, springboard elbow drop. Getting a lot of momentum, a lot of air underneath that elbow. One, two. Ooh. Yeah, that looked like three to me too, Ryan. Holy cow, so close. Ryan Adams, though, looking to put the former champ away right here. Turning him inside out. Going for the pin. This could be it here for Duke Zenda. And it is. Holy cow. Holy cow. Ryan Adams has just defeated the number one contender. Here is your winner, Ryan and Adams. it could definitely be said that SDC had something to do with that. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Adams. Well, folks, we got tag team action here tonight. As I mentioned earlier, we've got Ebony and Ivory, Jackson Montgomery, and Amari Williams. Now, Jackson Montgomery is always up for anything. He'll do anything and everything, clearly from his choice of attire. He will put himself in any situation. He does not care. Amari Williams, on the other hand, did not want to be a part of this team. Not at all. He didn't, he didn't care to be a part of it. He was just kind of thrown in this team. And they got all the way to the semifinals of the Gunslingers tournament before losing to Leo in the Sleeves, who eventually went on to win those championships. This team uh, is so unlikely and in no other way would be put together. But management liked it so much, they thought they should stay together. Their opponents here tonight. As we talked about Darkness Falls, Hades, Kid Hades and Lord Draven facing off against each other. These two men have stuck it out and stayed a team. This is the Freaks, Evelyn Reeves and Zach Graves. Now we know Evelyn Reeves has had hard times here this season. Evelyn Reeves is one and eight. He has only won one match Unfortunately, Zach Graves, he is two and two. Now the last match that Reeves won, I think it was all part of the uh, Freaks versus Faces. And um, every matchup he's had, unfortunately after that, he, he has lost. So um, including, including three matches uh, on Revolver. Once against Daniel Harris, once against newcomer Ventura, and once against Lance Roman. So he's got a lot to prove. He's got a lot to keep on the line. Omari Williams is going to start this thing. Zach Graves is going to do the same. It's tag team action. I'm really excited to see how this match turns out. Big right hand by Omari as he drops him down with a backbreaker. Omari and Jackson, uh, like I said, didn't really care to be a part of the team. Oh, look at Williams. Oh, looking like a roll up into a back body drop powerbomb type move. Nice job there from Amari Williams. Very decorated is Williams and quite a few other federations. Oh, went for a big right hand and Reeves 
excuse me, Graves stops that. Kitchen sink to the midsection and a second one before trotting him out. Side rush and leg sweep. Zach very close to Jackson Montgomery. Got to be careful over there. Stomp to the chest. He's going to bring Reeves in now. These two guys. These two. Oh, nice move there by Williams. Reeves and Graves fit perfectly together. Evelyn Reeves has uh, unfortunately been at the mercy of Jay Wolf the last couple of weeks. Oh, man, a big neck breaker there. Zach Graves, on the other hand, uh, lost a fatal four-way way back in episode two, which included Jackson Montgomery, Kid Hades, and the savage John Robb. He won that matchup, faces versus freaks. He also beat Jackson Montgomery one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and, and now he is looking maybe, maybe to get some more. Uh, oh, big neck breaker there. Maybe to attack uh, Jackson Montgomery a little bit more. Zach Graves did lose to uh, the Jersey, New Jersey Devil, Elliot Collins, on the second episode of Shootout. Or, excuse me, Revolver. Oh, Montgomery went for a big chop, and Reeves shut that down. Big kick to the back. Uh-oh. Jackson, take. Uh oh looks like. No, too far away. Graves really wanted that tag. Reeves, you're in the wrong part of town, brother. Oh, big right hand. Montgomery's got him up, and Reeves with the reversal into a DDT. Nice job. Nice job there. Now, Jackson Montgomery, he hasn't uh, had any matches on Revolver. He uh, was also part of that fatal four-way where the Savage John Robb won. He lost to Zach Graves. He did beat Ryan Adams way back in episode four. He did beat Evelyn Reeves back in episode seven. So maybe with the victory over Reeves and a loss to Zach Graves. Oh, and now Reeves is gonna uh, send him back in. Jackson Montgomery is two and two as well. Reeves uh, most with the most experience this season Look at, oh man, dropping Reeves on his head. Unfortunately, it all comes at the at, with losing record, as I said, with one and eight. One and eight. Jackson with the hot tag. Here comes Omari Williams. Big clothesline to Evelyn Reeves. Stomping now. Reeves back up to his feet. Omari again, single arm power bomb. Huge move. Now, Amari Williams is essentially alone at this point. Holy cow. Gut wrench power bomb there. Montgomery back up on the ropes, on the apron, I should say. Into the corner goes Reeves and a big flying elbow from Amari Williams, hooking him up into an alley-oop bomb, bringing him out of the corner. Ebony and Ivory working hard as a team right now big spinning elbow to the face of Evelyn Reeves and Omari Williams waited just a hair too long and a big super kick and Reeves is going wild he's trying to get these fans riled up and they might just do that into the corner oh goes for a shoulder block but Omari Williams dodges it big clothesline Knocks Reeves to the ground. And again, are we going to see that? Oh, man, the strength of Amari Williams is amazing. Oh, he rolls out. Now Amari Williams in a bad part of town. Shot after shot, reversal. Oh, misses the super kick. But in the end, he's got Reeves by the head, sends him... First, body first into that announced table and now he bounces his head off of that table. Man, these guys are going back and forth out here and a jumping clothesline sends Reeves to the mat. 
Ref at six. And we're gonna, we saw this on the other side over there. And I hope this doesn't end in a double count out because OOC of a stupid game flaw. I think that's what's gonna happen. Oh, maybe not. He's uh, dizzied. That was lame. Ebony and Ivory get the victory here due to a count out of Evelyn Reeves. Your winners now, Ebony and Ivory are one and one and the Freaks zero and one. Well, the last match did not end the way we, had, we would have liked it to. We may have to see a rematch of that shortly. But moving right along here, the flames coming from the turnbuckle posts could literally mean anybody, but we all know what it means. This man runs through our damn pyro budget every time he's on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, the galactic thriller, Siler Jordan. I'm surprised we even have enough budget to pay these people on the roster of SWF after this jerky makes his entrance and, and just waste all the pyro and budget we have. Siler Jordan, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us here in SWF, has had a very high, high last season and quite the low, low this season. Siler Jordan, multi Time champion here in SWF. The first ever internet champion held that championship for a long time before uh, Puma put him in a in an elimination chamber and Luke Luger ended up winning that. Then was drafted over from Rebellion to Uprising, became the Uprising champion and held it until the latest season where he lost it against Alex Corzo on one episode of Shootout. Well, then Alex Corzo dukes into Siler Jordan faced off the of Gold Rush, and the rest is history. Siler, or dukes into won that matchup. This man, Ventura, taking the place of James Frost. He vouched for this man. James Frost took a step back uh, James Frost was also the tag team partner of Thriller in the Clutch with Silas Jordan. So this is going to be quite uh, the interesting matchup. As we know, James Frost vouched for this man, so Silas Jordan had to have some sort of run-in, have some sort of acquaintances with this man. We'll have to see what he does here tonight against the natural born thriller. Now Siler Jordan is two and two this season. Ventura is two and one. Ventura on Revolver ended up beating, um, let's see, on the second episode, beating Evelyn Reeves. He then beat uh, Ryan Adams before his matchup on shootout last week against John Robb and Hunter King where Hunter King got that victory. But here we go. The Beast Ventura, the natural born thriller, Siler Jordan. Center of the ring and they lock up and you know that had to happen. Siler though, quick back up to his feet. Backslide driver and quick to the pin, trying to get out of this match early. Ventura's a big man, that is not a bad strategy. Siler Jordan doesn't want to get caught up in the grips of this beast center of the ring. Ooh. The kicks after Ventura misses the, the right hand. I'm sure I understand what's going on here. But Ventura a little maybe a little caught off guard. Maybe not. A reversal there from the apron. And a sidekick to the stomach. Oh man that big bicycle knee puts Jordan down on the mat. Siler Jordan 
Known for those knees. Yes, he is. Kid Hades, known for the knees. These guys know how to work that lower half. What? Oh, big shoulder block right into the lower back of Siler Jordan, into that turnbuckle. No cushion there. Not able to fall forward, nothing. Just right up against that big running knee from Siler Jordan. Puts the beast down. And as I say all the time, the bigger the man, the harder they fall. It's the cockiness of Siler Jordan there. And he catches a bicycle knee, a second one right to the jaw. And breaking the arm. But he gets pushed away. And and all and kind of begging, it looked like. Nice snapmare from Siler Jordan and hooks him up in that headlock. Nice resting hold. Gotta catch your breath. This big man is quite charismatic for as big as he is. Not to mention, you know, knees to the face. You keep him on the ground. You keep him locked up. Can't catch a knee to the face. A second backslide driver, this time not going for the pin. And the fans love some Siler Jordan. As cocky as he is, the man gets things done. And look at this. Maybe a little too close to the ropes. But we're about to maybe see the beginning of the end here. Siler Jordan, no! Ventura dodges the kick, the thrill knee, not this time, bow! Catches him across the chin and goes for the pin, but just a one count. The knees of Siler Jordan are some of the most deadly that I've ever seen in SWF and any promotion for that matter. The beast though, Ventura catches Jordan and turns him inside out. Hooks the leg, one, two, no. Siler kicks out. We know how stubborn Siler Jordan can be. We know how persistent he can be. He's gonna do everything that he can to get the victory. And if that means making you look like a chump, then it is what it is. Ventura. Double knees to the back. He's taunting now at the crowd and the not liking it. They're not even standing up. They're just giving him two thumbs down as he works over the knee. Seller Jordan grabbing it there. Gets picked up to his feet now and a big slap sends him into the corner. Uh-oh. Ventura slides back in and catches Siler Jordan with a clothesline. He might have thought he had him in the end of the turnbuckle. Center of the ring, and now Ventura starts in on the limbs, the extremities of Siler Jordan, and one to the chest, and one right across the bridge of the nose. My goodness. But Siler Jordan's going to kick him off and taunt towards the crowd as Ventura tries to pull himself up. Oh, he slides out of the ring. A little do -si do here. And oh, Jordan tries to catch Ventura off guard. But Ventura stomps on his hand, missing the grab. Siler Jordan pushes him off. Catches him with a clothesline, a forearm, and a sling blade to finish him off. Into the turnbuckle now. Will he hit it this time? He missed it. That last time, this time he catches the beast right across the bridge of the nose and busts him open. Two, three, and Siler Jordan has beaten the beast Ventura clean, might I add. It's hard to get past those knees of the natural born thriller. Huge shot, busts open the beast. And Siler Jordan loses his tag team partner and takes it out on his hand-picked man. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, the natural born thriller, Siler Jordan. In our main event of the evening, what can be said that hasn't already been said? 
about these four men. You know who I'm talking about. Coming to the ring first, ladies and gentlemen, is the Sons of Carnage. Now James Gaines III and Jesse Newman have had a battle, a freaking war against the Fallen Kingdom. If I'm not mistaken, They've only faced the Fallen Kingdom in the last two months or three months, and it shows. They are one in six. Now, the Fallen Kingdom have the most wins out of every, all the teams here in SWF. They have five wins and one loss. The Sons of the Carnage, unfortunately, have the most losses. Now, I'm not sure where this rivalry goes. They're gonna face off at Thin Red Line, finally finish this thing out between these two teams. And, their and that, ladies and gentlemen, is gonna be one hell of a matchup. That is gonna be a tornado tag, balls count anywhere, elimination tag team matchup. That is gonna be insane, the end all to, these, to this rivalry that has been going on for months. We'll see if, if we can't get a clear winner with a match like that. It's Thin Red Line, it's the pay-per-view. We gotta go balls to the wall, that's for sure. So it falls count anywhere. Elimination, tornado tag team match. What a mouthful that is. Jesse Newman and Malcolm Black start this thing off and they know each other so well that before we could even get going, Malcolm Black with the reversal shots to the midsection. And a nice flip over, headlock takeover there by Jesse Newman, but quick. Oh, looked like Malcolm Black was starting to reverse it. Goes face first into the mat. Jesse Newman bringing in James Gaines now. If I'm not mistaken here, uh-oh, oh boy, oh man. And then Gaines finishes it off with a nice Northern Lights. Now if I'm the Sons of Carnage, I'm trying to keep Bruiser Brad out of this match. He's bigger than both of those guys. And we've already seen what he can do on a few weeks ago on Revolver, Bruiser Brad and James Gaines faced off against each other. And um, it was pretty much a slaughter. Gaines had no chance, unfortunately. And it all came down to size. It all came down to size and in the end, Bigger took over. The Bigger man took over. And it, I mean, there's no, there's no way around that. You can't get around that. Oh, and a shot to the back of the head. And it looks like Malcolm Black is going to try to bring the big seven-footer in. Here he comes, full steam ahead, and he cl just crushes him, and he catches a clothesline on his way out. James Gaines, though, nice shot. Going to bring in Jesse Newman. And quickly, Brad grabs him. Snapmare takeover right into the corner there. Picks him up. Uh-oh. Sidewalk slam from Bruiser Brad. And night. Okay, arm drag there from Newman. Brad rolls out of the way. And a kitchen sink. What a roll that was. That was uh, very unorthodox for somebody like Bruiser Brad. Break of the eyes by Jesse Newman. He's going to take Brad over. Put him in the corner. No reversal. And now Brad's going to send Jesse into his corner. And another reversal there. Now, the, the one time we did see the 
Sons of Carnage get a victory over the Fallen Kingdom. It was the DDT from Jesse Newman that put Bruiser Brad down. And before, oh, before James Gaines can get going, Bruiser Brad tosses him like a sack of potatoes. But lucky for Gaines, in comes Malcolm Black. But he hooks him up with this submission move, really pulling back on the head of James Gaines. No, he's able to get out of it. But he's feeling the effects, that's for sure. Stomping now on the body. And a step on the arm, on the hand, and a shot to the shoulder. In comes Jesse Newman now. Oh, there it is. DDT to Malcolm Black. And Jesse Newman doesn't go for the pin right away. He's setting him up. Big cutter. And that could be it. Wisely pulling him away from the ropes, but he still might be a little too close to Bruiser Brad if he's trying to look to get some help, and he doesn't. Shot to the midsection. Float over DDT. Plants. Plants Jesse Newman. And he goes up. Way up top. What are we going to see here? Shooting star press from Malcolm Black. One. Two. No. Just a two count there. My goodness. Brad wants the tag and he gets it. And in comes the big man stomping right on the spine. And now he's got Jesse Newman hooked up with that big claw right across the shoulder area, right at the, the base of the neck. Picking him up and a side kick. That Yakuza kick lands flush on the ear of Gaines, or excuse me, of Newman. And now look, here we go. Stomp after stomp after stomp. In tags Malcolm Black. His turn to start laying the boots to Jesse Newman. And these guys are working as a well-oiled machine right now. And they're going to finish it off. Drop kick to the rib cage. Malcolm Black, I believe, is the legal man. Goes down for the pin. One, two, no. Just a two count. My goodness. Malcolm Black is putting it on Jesse Newman now. What are we about to see? Malcolm Black loves to go up top. And we are about to see him fly, baby. Coast to coast. And he hurts his back in the process. But he is up on his feet. He's going to drag Jesse Newman away from those ropes. And down for the pin. Here comes Gaines. And he breaks up the pin. Oh, and a reversal. But he gets caught by Brad. And a falling. Backwards falling slam. Fall away slam. There's the name of it. Malcolm Black now. SOS. And he's going to go up top. He's going up. Oh, he goes for the body splash and misses. Newman goes for a taunt. Kick to the midsection in a clothesline. Followed up by an elbow. He's going to toss. No, he dodges it. Not in the best place to be for Gaines. Because he is right there on top of Bruiser Brad. Might not be able to take advantage of that whole situation. And a Pele kick from Malcolm Black. Pele kick. And he goes for the pin. Perfect position in the corner. Using the ropes, but James Gaines, excuse me, Jesse Newman is able to get loose. Gaines comes in, though. Oh, look to do a little bit of damage. But Jesse Newman. Uh-oh. Hanging him up. Oh, man. That might have been below the belt. 
That might have been below the belt and the ref didn't see it. So we continue. Outside goes Malcolm Black. And Newman follows right after him. Takes him down to the mat right there in view of Bruiser Brad. Oh my gosh. Here comes Brad now, oh boy. He's gonna grab Newman, dropping him hard on his back. The ref is at four. And, oh man, a scoop slam where Newman falls hard onto his arm as it's tucked behind him, back into the ring as the ref counts to seven. Here comes James Gaines now. Big knee knocks down Malcolm Black. Gaines picks him up, sends him into the corner. Oh, missing the running knee there. His tag team partner's out on the floor. And it looks like, it looked like Malcolm Black might've been taking him over to Bruiser Brad. Brad gets the tag and here we go. Here we go, this could be the beginning of the end for the Sons of Carnage in this matchup. Big scoop slam as he brings those humongous boots down on the chest. Rake of the eyes though, by Gaines and a kick to the midsection. Takes the big man off his feet and a nice flying neck breaker. Unfortunately, his tag team partner's still on the outside. And he's just doing a little trash talk and waiting for Bruiser Brad to get up. Brad catches him and he's just playing possum. Standing possum, if you can. Running knee by Gaines. He's got the big man. Look at this, just this insane size difference here. Spinning. Uh-oh. You can't pick that big man up. DDT by Bruiser Brad. And a sidekick catches Gaines right in the ear, just as we saw a minute ago. Scoop slam. Picking Gaines up, not letting him get any kind of momentum going here. Oh, and a kick to the face. Bruiser Brad, though, right back at it. Tags in, Malcolm Black. We're about to see Malcolm Black fly. We know he does, and he catches James Gaines right across the chin. Down for the pin. One. Two, and Jesse Newman takes out the referee. That's one way to stop the pin, that's for sure. Ref has got to get up to his feet, though. And he's got to be conscious if either one of these guys want, or either one of these teams, I should say, want to win this matchup. Nice dragon screw there from Gaines. He has been on the uh, receiving end of a beating so far. And again, Jesse Newman on the outside. Multiple kicks and a big forearm right to the side of the head. Jawbreaker, though, by Malcolm Black. And here it is, that neck breaker. Square on the base of the neck. Gaines still, excuse me, Newman still on the outside. Might be a little close to the ropes, the ref calls it. And here's uh, Newman's back up in his corner. Reversal from Gaines. These guys know each other way too well. And a huge knee. Sends Malcolm Black down but a jawbreaker. Into the corner and another reversal. This time into the corner and he doesn't miss the knee that time. Catches the knee. Uh oh, Malcolm Black though catches the kick and face first. Face first goes Gaines. Here comes Jesse Newman and a drop kick. Nice move there. Black up to his feet. Shot to the midsection. Oh man, he's got him by the nose. Takes him way down for stomping on the back of his head. Newman in full control. DDT center of the ring and the pin. The ref goes down, but here comes Brad. Brad breaks it up. Newman goes after him. 
Everybody's on the outside. Malcolm Black left in the corner. Here comes Jesse Newman, and I don't know what he's thinking. Now these guys are both laid out. Who's going to get up first? And it looks like it's Malcolm Black. All he's got to do is throw the shoulder over Jesse Newman, but he's going to crawl over to the ropes before getting up to his feet here. Then goes for the pin. One, two, no. Just a two count. Into the corner now. And here we go. Ooh, big shot. We are about to see this big man fly. And he just catches his entire leg across the face. Down for the pin. Black's going to look to stop Gaines. And Gaines misses the, the breakup. And the Fallen Kingdom win once again. Uh-oh. These guys have been on quite the losing streak at the hands of the Fallen Kingdom. And they're wondering what's going on. This is how we're going to end shootout with Sons of Carnage not happy with each other. Guys, we got Revolver coming up. And then, of course, Thin Red Line. Don't miss it.